What's up YouTube? So today I'm going to be talking about the things that I've done for me to successfully make Mako eat pellets. I'm also going to include the things that different monster fish owners are able to use for them to be able to convert their fish into eating pellets. These are from different forums and also from different apps such as Facebook and also from Instagram as well. The first method that I used is starting them young. Starting them young kind of makes them imprint into whatever food that was given to them when they were younger. What I meant by that is that I have never ever given Mako anything that is alive when he was younger. When fishes are small, their appetite is really voracious and you have to take advantage of that. With that being said, I only gave Mako bloodworms when he was growing up. I would occasionally throw in a little bit of viber bites together with the bloodworms. In this way, he would be able to get some bloodworms in his mouth and sometimes occasionally he would be able to swallow some of the viber bites as well. And this will develop his uh, sense of taste with the viber bites. Another thing that you can do is when you're doing this method, you can also put the viber bites or whatever pellets of choice you have into the bloodworms while they are thawing. In this way, the pellets will be able to soak up whatever flavor the bloodworm has. Your next step is the starvation method. Keep in mind that your fish should be able to have the weight before you do this method. The reason why I suggest that is that when you're doing this to a younger fish, then you might end up having the fish stunted and you also might end up even killing the fish. Fattening up your fish before doing this means that you give the fish more chances of survival. According to the forums that I've read, monster fish are very notorious for not eating for a long time when you're doing this method. And with that being said, you have to be very, very patient when you're doing this. Some people have reported that their fish hasn't eaten for a week or even months before they break into eating pellets. But keep in mind that those forums are talking about big fish and not small fish. The next step that I did is to create a pattern before I feed the fish. I learned this from my mom when I was growing up and what she would do is she would just gently tap the glass before she feeds the fish and then the fish will just eventually come to the surface and get the pellets. And if you don't want to tap the glass for safety reasons, maybe you have a skittish fish, that's understandable. What I personally do is I would shake the food in front of the glass and this will create a sound and then the fish will just know that it's feeding time. Another great example is when you're walking by your tank and your fish will just follow you wherever you go. That's because they're expecting that you would give them food. Another way of creating a pattern is either feeding the fish at the same time of the day or even as simple as feeding the fish on the same side of the tank all the time. For example, I would only feed the fish on the right side of the tank. That means that they know that whatever goes into the right side of the tank is always edible. This also has another advantage. That means that whatever I put on the left side of the tank is not edible and that's where I put all the new fish in the tank. Another method that I've used is to create competition. That means introducing a very voracious feeder in your tank. 
With that being said, you have to consider your size tank and you have to consider the eventual size of the fish that you're introducing into the tank. For example, I introduced two tinfoil barbs into this tank so that Miko will have competition. Tinfoil barbs are known for their big appetite. They are also perfect because I don't see any aggression from them. They are also big and fast enough to be able to withstand Mako's aggression. As of the moment, there's only two tinfoil barbs in here and one geophagus. I also have five silver dollars that are growing out and they'll eventually go into this tank. That will also create more competition and the aggression will also be spread out more evenly. Competition is very important in a tank because it shows the fish that you're trying to feed that if it doesn't eat, then it will just starve. Another way that competition works is it shows the fish that you're trying to feed that whatever you throw in there is food and when they see that food being attacked by other fish then they would have the tendency to just attack it themselves. Another method that I've used is to try to imitate life. This is the same principle when it comes to fishing. What you need to do is to try to create it so that the food that you're putting in there, for example, the pellet, will move in a fast way. The way I was able to achieve this is to put a wave maker on top of the water column. This will move the pellets, considering they're floating, into a direction that are really fast and that will catch the eye of the fish that you're trying to feed. This will also trigger a predatory instinct and it'll also make the feeding more fun for you. Some people have done it differently though. For example, I know some people who would just put prawn maybe or a fish fillet in a string and they would just pull that string creating a movement, a rapid movement and that will trigger the fish to chase that. Remember, your main goal is to actually just have the fish put that food inside their mouth. That brings us to another method that I've seen other fish keeper do. And that is to give them frozen food. Although not as nutritious as pellets, they are more palatable. Some fish keepers will take advantage of that taste. So what they'll do is they will put the pellets inside the fish or maybe inside of the fish fillet or maybe inside of the prawn and then they would just throw it into the tank and wait until the fish gets them. The downside of this is if your fish doesn't eat it, then the tank just gets really smelly. Another downside that I think I've mentioned earlier is that it's not as nutritionally dense as the traditional pellets. Another downside that I can think of is that you have to thaw it before you feed this and you also have to keep this refrigerated when you're not using it. This can be time consuming, especially if you have to jam that food inside of the fish or the fish fillet or the prawn. Another method that helps is to increase the fish's appetite. There are a couple of ways that I know how to do this and the first one is to increase the temperature of the tank. Increasing the temperature will also increase the metabolism of the fish. High metabolism means that the fish's body function will need more fuel and that fuel is food. Another method of increasing the fish's appetite is to give them something that is really stinky. 
A great example of this is freeze-dried krill. What you can also do is you can crush garlic into a cup of aquarium water. Once you have the aquarium water soaked with garlic, you can just put your pellets in there and then eventually it will absorb the smell of the garlic and it will be very appetizing for your fish. If you don't want to crush garlic, you can also purchase those garlic essences from your aquarium store and you can just put that into the water. This will gradually be absorbed by the pellets and you can just throw the pellets into the aquarium. The next method is feeding the feeders first. This method is specifically helpful if your fish is used with live food. Before we start, I want to make clear that I'm not a fan of feeding live fish to your fish. So I was thinking more about mealworms and crickets. What I would do is I would wet the pellets and I would give them to crickets or mealworms that I already have. This means that whatever nutrition there is in the pellet food will be metabolized by the cricket or the mealworms that you're giving your fish. This will also give the fish a taste of the pellet that the crickets or the mealworms have eaten, especially if they haven't finish digesting that food. This last one is more of an advice instead of a method and that is to be patient. Your fish will not miraculously just devour the food that you give them. So just enjoy your time and just enjoy the process. Also know that whatever you're doing will be hard but you just have to keep on pushing and it will be worth it in the end. So these are the different methods I've used and I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you guys think that this video is really helpful. If you like this video, go ahead and feel free to subscribe and here's a short compilation video of Mako eating those pellets. Enjoy!